Ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at right now is what used to be a SteelSeries Rival 650. It is a wireless mouse or was. I didn't actually break anything except for the left and right click. Now, if you're wondering, I'm pretty good with electronics. I don't normally break things, but I really didn't have a choice. Fortunately, in today's video, I'm gonna be using my Logitech G Pro Wireless. Hopefully I don't break it too. I'll explain more in a bit. But today's video is all about mouse acceleration and not that crap you find in your Windows settings, but the good kind. And if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, I'm gonna drop a link at the top right that you can click on. In a nutshell, Kovac gives some advice about mouse acceleration, the good kind, and why you should use it. Before this video, I made sure to practice in Aim Hero. I have yellow targets for a specific reason, but we'll explain that another time. You might also be wondering why I'm not using Kovac's Aim Trainer. The explanation is actually pretty simple. Today's Aim Hero day, tomorrow I'll use Kovacs. There's two reasons for this. One is because I paid for them both and two, I just like to switch it up. So leave a like on the video if you haven't already and let's begin. So my first encounter with the good type of mouse acceleration was back when I first bought my Rival 650 mouse from SteelSeries. If you were to say that mouse acceleration is bad for your aim, you'd be right. Well, sort of. Not many people actually take the time to do their own research. And by research, I don't mean a few quick Google searches and then you're done. There's actually two sides to the story of Mouse Excel. Now to be fair, the overwhelming majority of gamers, both casual and pro alike, are definitely against Mouse Acceleration. But I'm willing to bet that 9 out of every 10 people who say Mouse Acceleration is bad are simply hopping on the bandwagon without looking into it or finding ways to do it effectively. You know what though, I might just be one of those rare people that are insanely good at aiming. Don't think so? Neither do I. It's inevitable that anything you practice enough will improve with time, and that's pretty much my strategy. I practiced about four hours a day for the longest time, and then recently I've dropped my practice routine to about an hour, and when I say practice, I don't mean simply playing multiplayer matches. I dedicate that time specifically to aim training and nothing else. So basically, I practice a lot. But at the time of practicing four hours a day, I still was not happy with my results. And that was until I first tried out mouse acceleration. Before that, I felt like I had done everything I could. Having high, medium, or low sensitivity, wrist aiming, arm aiming, it didn't seem to matter what I did. Low sensitivity offered more accuracy, but high sensitivity offered more mobility. How could I choose? And for some odd reason, trying to go the middle route was the worst of all. I always found myself running out of mouse pad. Fortunately, there was a very simple solution. Unfortunately, when I first started learning to use a mouse in gaming, it would take me a year of trial and error before I even found out about the good kind of mouse acceleration. But better late than never. I do feel though that if I had learned this a year ago, I would be so much better at aiming than I am now. I would have avoided so much trial and error. And if you're new to mouse acceleration or the idea of it, I highly recommend you to try it. There's literally nothing to lose. If you're like me and you enjoy accuracy of low sensitivity, but also like the mobility of high and medium sense, it's sort of the best of both worlds. You can have your cake and eat it too. And after that, you can have another cake. And if any of your friends tell you that mouse acceleration is bad, you can tell them the same thing I'm going to tell you. There are two types of everything. There's good and bad. The good type of mouse acceleration has a limit just to keep it in check. If you look at the graph, I have a linear acceleration curve. If this is too much math for you, just take my word for it that at a certain speed, you'll cap out and you won't be able to move your cursor any faster. So if you set this up right, your mouse won't just go crazy and out of control. 
With my specific settings, most of the time, I can't even tell that I have acceleration. When I first started using it, it was very apparent in the mid range of movement, but whenever I'm doing fast aiming or flick shots, my mouse cursor speed tops out, meaning that no acceleration is applied at the upper range of movement. However, in the mid range when I'm tracking targets, this is where I notice that the Excel comes in handy. This gameplay is the only proof that I can actually show you unless you try it yourself. Now my settings, they work for me, but if you want to customize it yourself, not every setting is going to work. There are two basic things you have to take into account when using Pavohat Mouse Excel Utility. Number one, make sure you have a sensitivity cap. This is a setting within the application. It limits the speed that your cursor can move. This way, if you have high sensitivity or even low sense, whenever you do flick shots or fast aiming, you're going to have more control over your movement and it's gonna feel like you don't have mouse acceleration enabled. With my particular settings, the long, slow strokes are the ones that trigger the Excel, but when you make short, fast flicks, virtually no acceleration is applied. What this means is, whatever DPI you're used to using and whatever accuracy you're used to having, you're still going to have that with your fast aiming, but having mouse Excel can improve your tracking accuracy. For example, whenever you're moving your mouse at a slow speed, a lot of times, if your sensitivity is too high, then you're going to see a little bit of jitter. The friction between your mouse and the mouse pad can cause you to have less accuracy. So the main benefit of this free application is that you don't have to go out and buy anything. You don't have to get a better mouse. You don't have to get hyper glides for your mouse feet. You also don't have to disable your gaming mouse software. Due to the nature of Pavohat's mouse Excel utility, it doesn't seem to have any noticeable impact on CPU usage. In fact, when I looked into my task manager, I couldn't see a CPU usage number for Enter GYEXE. That is the application that's gonna show up whenever you check for what's running. Overall, the footprint of this application or the CPU usage, in my experience, is very light, if not virtually non-existent. And I do believe that the gameplay speaks for itself. If you're interested in mouse acceleration, or even if you're still not convinced, talk to me down in the comments section. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay as well. By the way, I will be testing Apex Legends and Fortnite, and I also have Rainbow Six Siege. For those of you who have been lighting up my comment section, just spreading the love, thank you so much. And if you're brand new and you're not already subscribed, we'd love to have you as part of this community. So please don't leave without hitting that bell. Make sure to have all notifications enabled. That way you know every time I post a video. Guys, that's gonna wrap it up pretty much. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope to see you another time in another video. If you'd like to message me on Twitter or even Discord, those links are down in the description. I know that I'm not always free, but when I have the time, I promise that I will reply. If you just need someone to talk to or a friend to play with, I'll definitely try my best to be as available as I can. In the meantime, please take care and don't hesitate to reach out if you ever need anything. But for now, I gotta go, gotta end this video. Have a good one. Peace.